Hi, Governor. Hello. How are you? Great. Good afternoon. And to everyone at home, we begin today with a question from Anita Buffoni of WPRI. Governor, some local income homeless people are not able to afford even the discounted rates hotels are offering through RI Havens. Are you considering ways to make these rooms or housing free to those who don't have the financial means to pay for housing and need to self-quarantine? Yes, we are. Thank you. So, so first of all, I want to remind everyone we do have the hotel uh, in Warwick, the Wyndham Hotel, which is what we, there's about 200 rooms there, and that's where we are isolating and quarantining homeless folks now. So there is that facility. It's, I think we have about 50 people there, and there's, there's, other, there's room available. Secondly, we are also working with colleges and universities to see if we might be able to use some of their dormitories. Um, for that, but also really for healthcare workers. So if you're a healthcare worker and you don't want to go home because you don't want to expose everybody in your home um, to the virus or potentially, yet you can't afford a hotel, we are working hard to maybe be able to put you up in some dormitories for free so that you can keep, keep you and your family safe. Brian Crandall asked a question referring to the model that you released mm, yesterday. Yes. The blue line best scenario model revealed yesterday appears to predict Rhode Island should have about 1,000 hospitalizations right now. Since the reality right now is about 250 hospitalizations, are the predictions significantly overblown or already outdated? Yeah, great question. So remember, that is hospitalizations. I think until now we've had not about 450, not, not quite 500, because there's been folks that have been released. Um, and no, it's not, it's neither. The, the data yesterday was a model, not the actual data. We give you the actual data every day, and then what we showed you were simulations. So the hope, as I was very clear about this yesterday, it's on us. If we continue to obey the stay-at-home order, it is absolutely my hope that we, our actual experience, not my hope, my expectation, is that our actual experience will be better than the blue line. Um, and it, it, only time will tell. Remember, we have very limited data because you don't know the benefit of the social distancing for about maybe 10 days after it's been in effect. So we really only have three or four days of hospitalization data which is why I was reluctant to put it out in the first place. So long story short, the red line is a scenario that I think is not going to happen. Uh, the blue line is one I think we can beat. Let's beat the blue line by continuing with our social distancing so on or about May 8th we can start, you know, beginning our return to normalcy. The next question is from Michael Bilo of Motif Magazine. Germany announced their R0 has been brought to 0 0.7 from over 3 in the last six weeks, meaning the virus is no longer increasing its spread rate. Do we know the R0 in, our, in Rhode Island? How long will it take for Rhode Island to deploy enough testing, both swab and serolo serologic. serologic, excuse me, mm -hmm. to break down the 1.0 barrier? Okay, so R0. It's basically a measure of how infectious the disease is. How, it's a measure of how many other people somebody who's infected will infect. Um, for a period of time, when we were uh, doubling our hospitalizations every four days, we were at an r naught of above three. That's not where you want to be. That's an unsafe level. If you're doubling your hospitalizations every three days, every four days, every four and a half days, your R naught is somewhere between three and four. Um, our best guess right now, and it is a guess, is it's two-ish, maybe 1.8, maybe two. We are trying, but, but, but a week ago, we were three plus. So what's the point of this? for the average person listening at home. Keep doing what you're doing. It is working. Keep doing what you're doing. It is working. Ever since we put the stay-at-home order in place, we've seen Im improvements. And it has given us time to buy the million masks, get the hospital beds up and running, and do everything we need to do. 
I will tell you this, and this I know. I don't know precisely what our R0 is. I don't know precisely where we are on that curve. I don't know if our peak will be April 30th or May 5th. I do know this. If this weekend everybody says, hey, things look pretty good, I'm going to go hang out with my friends. Hey, it looks pretty good, I'm going to have a dinner party. You know, I think I'm going to start going back to work on Monday. We're going to start racing right back up that curve, and all the hard work and economic suffering that people have endured for the past month will be out the window. So don't do it. We've got a couple weeks left. You're doing a terrific job literally saving lives. The difference between the blue line and the red line was more than 2,000 lives and countless amount of human suffering. So hang in there um, and let's really nail this social distancing a little bit longer. For the folks that joined us from the very beginning, you might have heard car horns in the background, mm -hmm. and that's what Steve Alquist is referring to when he asks this question. From Never Again Action, 52 people were released from the ACI. Over 100 people were honking outside the State House, calling on you, Governor, to use your executive power to free prisoners and ensure safe conditions on the inside. Can you do more? Uh, so thank you for the question, Steve. And yes, I, I did hear the horn circling the State House, and I appreciate their right to protest. So I am not, however, going to use my executive authority to free all the people at the ACI. Uh, what I have done is um, released a certain number of them who were about 90 days away from release anyway. And what we have done, and that's enabled us to do better social distancing inside the ACI. What we have done is we're in daily contact with the medical staff there to make sure we're ramping up testing, make sure we're doing our best to provide PPE, doing our very best to, to clean the facility, and we will continue to do that. And as testing gets better and as treatment get better, we'll make sure that, that the most vulnerable everywhere, including in the ACI, will be the beneficiaries of that. Our next question is from Tony Mendez, and it's for the doctor, Dr. Alexander Scott. What may explain the reason why almost half of all positive COVID-19 cases are Latinos? That's an important question, Tony, um, and we're still understanding the data. We appreciate um, the advocates who have reached out to continue to get more because that's what we need to do. We need to continue to dig deeper into answering these questions. We know that COVID-19 does not have a predilection or a, a favoritism of people who are of Latino descent. We need to understand what's already going on in our communities that would cause certain populations to um, have these increased numbers. It goes back to um, messages that people have often heard me talk about that someone's zip code should not determine how healthy they are or how healthy the community is that they live in and right now it does there's work for us to do here in rhode island and across the country and what we're seeing here in rhode island and across the country is the outcomes of that through covid 19 when we have differences in quality of education, in quality of housing supports, in quality of access to fresh fruits and vegetables, safe streets to walk on, um, access to family supports, economic development, job opportunities, when that differs and you insert a pandemic like COVID-19, you unfortunately see the exposed result of that, where certain communities, not because they have any genetic predisposition towards getting this virus, but certain communities are more at risk, and unfortunately more at risk of negative outcomes. So it really gives us the opportunity to look beyond COVID-19, see how we can continue to build the community infrastructure that we need to so that we don't have as many differences based on zip codes, and we support resources and investments into our communities equitably across the board. That's the mention of the health equity zones and many of the community-based organizations that work hard every day to advocate for Latinos and many of our important communities throughout Rhode Island. 
Perhaps you both could feel this question from Bruce Newberry of WADK Radio. It will have taken six weeks or more to peak. After the peak, whenever it is, how long might it take for rates of hospitalization, deaths, and positives to go down to the level where the state could reopen? It's an important question and one that we are all assessing, looking at data here in the states, learning from what we can from other countries. Um, before I turn it over to the governor to be able to share more, I want to just relay the message about this virus uh, overall. We know that the social distancing measures that are in place now, they work. We also know that our expanded testing approach with aggressive um, and comprehensive case identification and contact tracing so that we can identify the people who have symptoms or who test positive, support them as they isolate safely, and engage with the people who had direct contact with them and help them to quarantine safely and appropriately as well. That's another approach at making sure there's the social distancing because that's the way the virus stops spreading. The minute you let up on those types of measures, the minute the virus can spread more and lead to new infections. So we have to come up with, with the governor's leadership and the thoughtfulness of our team and everyone across the state, ways to minimize re-emergence of the virus by bringing people together. And there are going to be creative ways to do that, but it's important to understand that that's gonna be an, uh, a, an approach needed until we're able to have a vaccine and stop the virus from being present overall. In the meanwhile, we do have some vaccines like the flu vaccine that is available for people to stop other types of viruses that are present. Uh, so I, Nicole did a beautiful job. I would just say yesterday, um, the CDC, in collaboration with the White House, put out guidance that in order for a state to think about reopening the economy, they ought to have 14 straight days in a row of declining cases. So that is a guide that uh, I will be following as one measure, as a, as a safe indicator of when we're on the backside of that curve. Um, next week, I will have a lot more to say about uh, when we'll be reopening, under what set of conditions, um, when industries might come back first, et cetera. The next question is from John DePietro. He asks, Governor, advice to people contacting the Department of Labor and Training for unemployment. People keep calling, reach the menu, and reach a message saying no one available to answer the phone call, so they need to call back. Could a system be implemented that people can make an appointment, like at the registry? Yeah. So, a couple things. Um, everyone, if you can, please just go straight to the website rather than calling and file on the website um, for your unemployment or any other kind of benefit, the, if you're a hairdresser or a gig economy worker, the PUA. Secondly, we are working, we are, what we, are, we are trying to implement a new technological solution that will fix exactly the problem that you say, and I am hopeful that we're going to be able to get there soon. Um, we're just not there yet. I mean, the truth of the matter is it's a ancient technology system. It was not built for 140,000 claims, uh, and we are struggling through it every day. I will say, um, as a credit to the team at the Department of Labor and Training, there are many other states, including Massachusetts, that haven't even started um, processing the PUA claims. We were the first or one of the first states in America to start getting those checks out. Uh, so the, relative to other states, we're doing an excellent job. Having said that, if you're waiting for a check, you want to know when's it coming. And the only thing I can say is we have a tech team on it, and um, I hope next week it'll be a little bit better than it has been right now. But we're on it, we're processing everything, uh, and, and use the website. If you can't get through, try back again later, try back the next day. 
Next question is from Brendan McCare of the Pawtucket Times. Have you had conversations with the Rhode Island Interscholastic League, and what guidance have you provided the league as it relates to spring high school sports? Yeah. I know that we have. I know that on how the uh, commissioner, uh, Infante Green, has been in touch with them, and you're looking for some guidance. So uh, we will get back to you on that. The only thing I will say is, um, it's going to be hard to engage in any activities that involve crowds for the foreseeable future, uh, but, but we owe you better guidance than that, and we will get something out to you. Our last question today for this Friday briefing is from Tanya Signori of the Rhode Island Echo. Good afternoon, Governor. Some large grocery stores and retailers still seem to be full with shoppers. This seems to depend on the time of the day. How can we ensure stores are following maximum number protocols, or can we try and lessen this number? Yeah. Thank you, Tanya. We have been, we've had our eye out too. Um, by and large, you know, statewide, it's not a significant problem. It, it doesn't mean that what you are saying isn't true. I'm sure it is. In fact, I'd love it if you called my office and told me where you're seeing these crowds so that we can get on it and disperse them. Uh, and we'll continue to improve our enforcement. The many, many retailers are doing exactly what we've asked, checking people in. Um, a lot of them have done the one-way aisles. I would strongly encourage any grocers or retailers who haven't done the one-way aisle to please do that. It alleviates crowding in the aisle. Uh, but in any event, I will, uh, I'll, I'll continue our vigilance. And I would just say to the people of Rhode Island, as we begin our weekend, just if you're in a crowd, you're doing something wrong. If you're in a deli line and it's crowded, go back later. If you show up and the parking lot is full at a retail shop or grocery store, try to go back later. Uh, it could be the difference between life and death for, for somebody, and I'd appreciate it if, as I keep saying, May 8th is the day the stay-at-home order is in effect until, and I'm going to hold us all to it, because uh, I think it's essential, back to Brian Crandall's question, let's, let's do better um, so that everybody can be safe and get back to work as soon as possible. So thank you. Have a good weekend.